Hey, what's up everybody? Greg Gray here with Outdoor Solutions. If you are new to our channel, welcome. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button for us. We do a little bit of everything here. Um, we do hunting, we do fishing. Uh, we teach people how to hunt, butcher, cook, process and cook wild game. We do long range shooting. We give you shooting tips. So pretty much anything to do with the outdoors that has to do with hunting all the way down to cooking. We can probably help you with we try to entertain you along the way uh, we do some fun adventures we go to alaska we go to canada we're going to go to argentina we do a lot of fun stuff and we bring you along with us so i hope you enjoy this video today with this one it would normally be a video that one of our chefs would do on breaking down a hind quarter now the reason that i'm doing it is to show you all that the proverbial, if I can do it, anybody can do it kind of thing. That's really what this is. So we just started Field the Table four years ago. We um, uh, started in Texas, and now we have spread out and we do these Field the Table events from Texas to Alaska. I'm in Montana today. We're actually live at a from Field the Table event, but the students are inside with Chef Joe, and they're butchering at Pine Quarters as well. So I went and stole one of them and thought, you know what, I'm gonna come out here and do this video and show you guys um uh, like i said a second ago that if i can do it anybody can do it kind of thing because four years ago i could not have done this i've had a lot of help i've learned a lot from chef joe chef albert chef cliff uh, on how to butcher these things not only how to butcher but also um, how to identify each individual muscle and the cooking methods for them. And then finally, what recipes that we could use for each individu individual muscle. So what I'm gonna do in this video is give you a few tips, some things that I've learned. We're going to uh, clean this hind quarter up. We're going to butcher it. And then we're going to ID each muscle and then basically what we could do with it. So this will be a little bit longer video uh, than some of our others and um, I'll try to make it as painless as possible. So one of the first things that we want to do, if you have the ability to do this, now I know if you're out in the field that this won't always work, but it's always easier to work with a chilled muscle. It cuts a lot easier, it's not as slippery, and it's just easier to work with. So if you have the ability to do that, I definitely recommend it. We do not have a big walk-in cooler here like we do some of our other facilities. We're actually on the Crow Reservation in Montana, so we just had ice chests. So we iced them down. We put these in bags so that they weren't soaking in water. That is something you do not want to do because uh, it basically will just leach um, all the flavor out of it, and it'll just turn gray, and it'll look terrible and taste not good, no flavor at all. Um, so anyway, so they've been on ice, so it's relatively chilled. Um, the other thing before we start butchering is you want it to be clean. So antelope are notorious for losing their hair. Their hair comes out really easy. So it, it is a challenge to not get um, uh, hair on the meat. And so uh, I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but there's still some hair on this one, not a, a ton. Um, so we're going to do our best to get as much of this off as we can. Uh, Mac actually did a really good job on keeping this one um, clean, but with uh, antelope, man, it is really almost impossible to not get hair uh, on there. So anyway, with that being said, he did, he did do a good job. We're gonna get this thing cleaned up as much as I can. The other thing that you really want to look at is uh, bloodshot and cleaning off any, um, uh, sinew uh, that's on there which is that's what this is you've got uh, sinew and you've got silver skin uh, silver skin is something completely different we'll show you that here in a second and then just some of this that just doesn't look um, all that good we're so we're just going to clean up so uh, that's what we're going to spend the next few minutes doing is just kind of cleaning this up uh, there's really no wrong way to do it other than just don't cut down deep into the muscle do it more of a sideways motion that way you're just cleaning off whatever's on top and then if it still doesn't look good uh, going down into it you just go a little bit deeper so I'm gonna start cleaning some of this off now sometimes with uh, animals uh, out in the field there may not be a whole lot to clean to clean off so if you got everything uh, separated got the quarters broke down off of the off of the carcass and it's still relatively clean you may not have to do uh, any of this other than uh, taking off the fascia now 
most of the time I'm going to recommend uh, taking this uh, fascia off each individual muscle after you separate the muscles. But some of this, um, because of the hair on there, I'm just going to cut it off instead of trying to pick each individual hair off. Otherwise, I'd be here all day on there. So we're just going to get some of this off the top. One of the other things uh, I mentioned, everybody asks Chef Albert all the time, uh, what's your favorite kind of knife to use? And his answer is always a sharp one. So as far as knives goes, uh, if you've been watching this for any period of time, you know that we are partnered with Meat. We have been since their inception. They uh, manufacture uh, processing equipment, so they do um, the grinders and the sausage stuffers and the meat mixers, vacuum sealers, chamber vacs, and knives. So we do use their knives. They actually have an excellent set. I'll put a link uh, below uh, in the description. It actually goes through our website. We do get a small commission um, for it, but mostly it lets our uh, partners at Meat know that you all are watching our videos and that you're buying stuff through us. So that's really what that's for. But they have an excellent uh, butchering set. Uh, and they have a, excuse me, a kitchen set as well. Um, so those are the ones that we use, but uh, to keep them sharp, this is what I carry out in the field. When we're doing our field of tables, we do have um, from WorkSharp the um, um, uh, electric one with a, uh, a band on it, and we're able to sharpen a bunch of knives really quick. But out in the field, I carry this in my kill kit uh, with my knives. So it actually has two sides to it. It has one side uh, to get any burrs off, kind of a rough edge, and then it has a ceramic side with a built-in angle. Uh, on it so that I can keep the right angle and uh, keep my knife sharp. So I have that, that with me pretty much everywhere I go. Okay, so this side really wasn't terrible. So that's the uh, pelvic bone right there. And most of this is just gonna be stuff that we're just gonna cut off and not end up using anyway. So most of that looks pretty decent. Let's come over here to this side. Yeah, this side's even cleaner. Uh, let's get some of this hair off here if we can. And don't be, don't be afraid to use that knife. Just dig in there. <clears throat> it's inevitable you're probably going to cut into a muscle that you didn't mean to cut into, but it's okay. That's how, that's how we learn. Uh, everybody, when they first start at one of our field to table uh, events, man, everybody just, they're just being so precision. They're doing these little bitty cuts because they're afraid of messing something up. It's going to happen. So just, just go with it and uh, learn. You know, if you cut into a muscle, uh, just learn not to do it again, you know, so um, it will happen. The cool thing, especially about a hind quarter, is that it literally gives you a road map. I don't know if you can see these seams, but those are seams that you're just going to follow, and those are just different uh, individual muscles um, that we're going to follow uh, as I start breaking this thing down. So um, one of the things that I do, I try to do it pretty much the same way every time so i find a starting point and then just dig in and go there's really not any i guess there could be wrong ways to do it but um find what's comfortable for you so i have learned from chef albert and from chef joe who those guys have forgotten more than i'm ever going to know um, but i also found what works for me like for a starting point where to get started because you kind of look at this as like where do I start with this thing? So I typically start on the sirloin tip, which is basically uh, your quad muscle. So that's this right here. That is a sirloin tip, uh, which is a less than tender cut. And I'll go into more details with that later. Sitting right on top of it, this little ridge here, that is the uh, tri-tip. And you may hear more about that and really more from a uh, beef aspect. I know in California they're super popular. They're really good to marinate and put on the grill. It's actually an excellent cut. But on something as small as an antelope, there's not much to it. You're getting a, a couple of ounces at the best. So I end up just throwing it in the uh, in the grind pile. But this, the reason I said that is a good place to start. So this is the um, uh, the rear quarter of an antelope and you've got part of the leg bone here. So I usually start right on it and, and we'll cut in and around that bone. And again, this is just something that I do. Chef Albert actually does it uh, a little bit different. And I know uh, Chef Joe does as well. But what I'm gonna do is just start cutting up the seam and we're gonna take uh, this uh, sirloin tip off of the bone. And then whenever I open this thing up, you're gonna see all the seams inside and you're going to see uh, the bottom round 
the uh, top round, the eye around, the sirloin tip that I'm getting ready to take off, uh, the sirloin butt, and, and then down below then we'll have the uh, shank and the heel. And I think I've covered everything. There's like seven or eight muscles uh, in there. And we'll just go through and identify um, each one of them as I start, uh, as I start taking this uh, apart here. So hopefully, I'm, I'm filming this by myself, by the way. I don't have uh, the luxury of having uh, Ashley here to help me. Uh, so I'm hoping these angles are all, all good so that you guys can see. I'm doing the best that I can here trying to, trying to do it all. So what I'm doing on this first one is I'm just following that seam. And one of the other things uh, also is, remember I said not to cut deep down into, so I just followed that seam and I just used just a little, a little part um, of my knife just so that I could separate that and get that seam busted open and I've got that fascia over the top of it so now as you can see here on this is the bottom round I've got here you see how this is starting to separate and a lot of times I'll go ahead and just pull this one off first because it sits over it overlaps quite a few of the other muscles so you can literally do a lot of this even without a knife, you can start pulling this stuff apart with your hands and not even have to use a knife until you get down to the, to the end of it. So, see I'm digging in here. See how that's sitting right on top of another muscle. And there you've got all that fascia right in there, which a lot of this we will end up removing. So this is the uh, bottom round that I've got my hand on here. And as we go through this video, uh, I'll go through the muscle ID uh, on each one of these, just so that you know what they are and the cooking methods with them as well. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the bottom round pulled apart. And then this here where I, where I started that goes, that wraps right around uh, the uh, leg bone is the sirloin tip, and I just cut loose. We're going to go ahead and cut this off. Remember, I was telling you about the muscle that sits right on top of it, the tri tip. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut this off and just show you what it looks like. All right, so that's how small it is on a on an antelope. That is just a uh, uh, a tri tip, of course, on a uh, a a cow, a beef cow or a steer, it's much larger and it's an excellent cut. So for this, uh, I'm just gonna put it in a, uh, in a grind pile and we'll, uh, we'll grind it up. At our house, we do a lot of grind just because it's fast and simple and we make a lot of different dishes with it. So uh, it's just a, a easy way for, uh, for me to get stuff done. So now what I'm doing uh, for the sirloin tip, I'm cutting right down um, to the bone and I'm just wanting to separate everything off this bone. Again, I'm just using the tip and I'm not going um, too deep because I don't want to cut into uh, any of the other muscles. So I'm trying to turn this so that you can see what I'm doing here. And then it's going to do the same thing over here on this side. Again, just right down to the bone and I'm following a seam in here. Actually, well, I think it'd be easier if I just take this off right here okay if you can see the seam where I'm cutting right down in here right under that is the leg bone and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel that right off so you all can see it you can see the seam I'm cutting here that is the uh, again that's the bottom round and I'm just going to separate that and get it off so that you can see everything else. Okay, so that is your bottom round. And whenever I clean this up a little bit, we'll show you a little bit better, uh, but you can see the grain in it. And it's one of the ways that you can easily identify uh, what the uh, bottom round looks like. Oh, I set a plate. <laughs> 
<laughs> that glove's not doing me a lot of good anymore. So now we've got the uh, sirloin tip here exposed, which is what I was wanting to do, so that you guys could see it a little bit better. And we'll just cut it right off of the bone. So the other thing that Chef Albert calls this one is the football, which you're getting ready to see why, because whenever you have it completely off, it looks like a football. Makes sense, huh? All right, so there is your football or your sirloin tip. Actually, I'm just gonna set both of these in here for right now. So now you're starting to see the, the bone just a, a little, little bit better. So uh, this is how it went on the, uh, on the animal. And this next one that I'm getting ready to take off is the sirloin butt, which, which sits right on the tail, right on top. And it is a uh, tender cut. So that is a sirloin butt. butt. Um, the other thing with these animals, whether it's moose, deer, elk, antelope, they're all going to be the same. They all have the exact same muscles. Obviously, some are just going to be bigger than others. All right, so I'm just going to keep separating stuff here off of the uh, bone here. One of the things that I do... Uh, our chefs, because of how long they've been doing this, they just whip right through everything. And they can literally do this in, uh, in seconds where, you know, someone like me that hasn't been doing it as long, takes a little bit longer. But one of the things that I do, one, obviously we're going to follow the seams, but I just feel around for where the bones are and I keep my knife right up against it and um, just cut along that way. That way I know I'm not cutting into something I'm not supposed to be. And it just helps me kind of guide along. All right, so here I just cut off two more muscles, two of my favorites actually. So if you can see, here's a great example. So here's a seam right here, and I'll just do this with my hand so you can see what I'm talking about. So it looks like this is one muscle, but as I start pulling these seams apart, you're going to see that there's actually two. I'm gonna get out the knife and I'm gonna show you something else here in just a second that you don't want to cut into and that you do not want to cook because it will taste nasty. So this I'm pulling apart. I'm separating the eye of round from the top round. Okay, so the small one uh, is the eye of round, also called the mock tender because it looks like a tenderloin. It's very, very similar, um, but it uh, tastes and chews much differently. It's not near as tender as the tenderloin would be, which I guess would make sense. Well, I was going to tell you, whenever you separate the eye of round uh, it, uh, from, the, um, from the top round, there is a, in a clump of fat, there is a gland that goes in between there. And if I was to cut into it, I'm not going to because I don't have another knife out here. But if I was to cut into it, just this gray, nasty looking gland stuff and you do not want to chew that I promise you you will spit it out very quickly so um, now the uh, next one that we have here we'll go ahead and clean this off uh, now we're getting down to the uh, parts that are closer to the ground on the muscles the closer to the ground the tougher they're going to be but the more flavor they're going to have the reason that they're tougher is because they are muscles that are worked a lot more you know this is obviously into the leg and what i'm uh peeling off here is what's called the heel so it's basically going to be like a uh, a calf muscle and i'm just going to cut it right off you will hear some people talk about grinding this i don't grind it because um, it has a ton of connective tissue on the inside here um, so whenever i take the heel and the shank, um, I, uh, I put them in my Instapot and make some type of roast with it, or I will inject it and uh, make uh, corn venison with it, uh, which is one of my favorites. We actually do that quite a bit at the house. And in fact, we did a field the table right before this group here at the same location, and Chef Albert had them make a Reuben egg roll 
which was amazing. I never would have thought of that. It was just something he kind of thought of on the fly, but it didn't sound good to be honest with you. Uh, so we, we uh, corned some venison, some of the antelope, and, um, uh, and of course cooked it. And then uh, we stuffed it inside an egg roll wrapper with some uh, uh, Thai chili sauce and we made a, a wasabi. And I can't remember what else they put in, inside the egg roll. It was amazing. I hope we, I know we will do them again because I'm going to request it. So anyway, so here is the heel. Again, you can inject that, do whatever you want. Now this, uh, this last one, same thing with this. So this is the shank. Uh, this is what like uh, Osobuco uh, would be made from. Uh, very, very tough cut, lots of uh, sinew, lots of tendons. Uh, again, I don't grind this, lots of people do, um, but you're just gonna get a lot of uh, sinew uh, in, your, in your burger. So that's, um, that's why I don't do it. And it cuts off of the, uh, off of the, the bone here pretty, um, pretty easy. But you can see here, there's lots of tendons uh in this thing so that's why i don't do it because you're not going to get to the inside very well so we'll get this off and this is something that you guys can do relatively quick so i haven't been doing this for a real long time i feel like i've learned relatively quick i'm i'm not any smarter than the than the, the next guy but learn relatively quick and like I said I've, I've learned from from the chefs and then we've now have great resources on our website so if you go to from field to there are a lot of great resources on there uh, our YouTube channel we have um, some really good videos on there from um, our chef team uh, Deborah and I do some cooking on there so um, well you guys are here on the YouTube channel now so you can check out some of the other videos uh, the other thing that we now have is uh, our membership from fieldtotable.com. So if you don't have the opportunity to come to uh, one of our live events because of time or whatever reason, or even if you have been to it, this is a great follow-up resource because when you come to a field to table, um, you're drinking from a, fire, from a fire hose. You're getting a lot of information in a very short period of time. So... Uh, this is a great resource where you've got lots of videos uh, from the chef team, uh, butchering, cooking, sausage making, cooking methods. We do live events. There's just all kinds of stuff on there. It's $129 for the year. Uh, and that gives you access to everything. There's nothing else for you to buy uh, once you're inside. So that is also a great resource. So uh, you can see we've got this cleaned off pretty good in a pretty short period of time. Obviously I've been talking as I've been doing this and I am not near as fast as, the, um, as our chefs. Uh, but like I said, it's something I feel I'm getting down. Uh, pretty, pretty good. So here's what we're gonna work on next. So this last one that I have here is the top round, uh, which is a uh, tender cut. And uh, I'm going to show you some things on it. We'll talk about it a little bit and I'm going to clean it up. So one of the things with the top round is that it has a cap that sits right on top and you just pull it off. Obviously on an antelope, it's going to be relatively small. Um, everything is to scale depending on what type of uh, animal uh, that you'd been hunting. But this cap, I just cut right off. And what that does is show you all the grain of the, um, of the top round. So you can see how that grain is all running in one direction. On the bottom round, I'll show you here in a minute, it runs diagonal to where this runs on the top round, it runs vertical. So one of the things that Chef Albert has done is we've categorized um, all the meat in, um, in, a, in a wild game animal into just three categories. So it's either going to be tender, it's going to be less than tender, or it's going to be tough. And each one of those has uh, multiple cooking methods. All of that information is on from fieldtotable.com. So you can check it out uh, after you finish uh, this video. So this one with the top round, it is a tender cut. So that means it is going to get dry cooking methods. So that means that you can grill it, you can saute it, uh, you can uh, pan fry it, you can uh, uh, fry it in grease. There's a lot of different things that, that, uh, that, that you can do with it. All right, so this cap, I just took it off and it is going to go in my grind pile. The other thing with the top round, there's actually 
two separate muscles here. Uh, and this, the second muscle, um, Chef Albert calls it the head. I don't know if that is the uh, official term for it, but you can see this seam here um, that this actually just pulls right apart. The other thing, before I pull it apart, you can see how that muscle is kind of heart-shaped. So that's another way that you can identify that it is top round. It's heart-shaped and the grain runs north and south on it. it runs, runs vertical instead of on a horizontal plane. So we're gonna cut this head uh, off of the top round. And when you do that, you just end up with a piece that looks like this. Now, when you get ready, uh, we're, we're gonna be vacuum sealing and putting this in the freezer. There's two different things that you can do here. We can cut off all of this uh, sinew that's on there right now, and if there was any silver skin, uh, we could do all of that right now, uh, which obviously is gonna take more time, or you can do it after, uh, whenever you pull it from the freezer, uh, and thaw it out. Uh, that is, the latter is what Chef Albert does. Uh, Chef Joe does it the opposite. He cleans up everything ahead of time. Um, Chef Albert uh, does it that way, one, because it doesn't take as, as much time. Um, if you don't do it all right now, then when you pull it out of the freezer, you just have to do a little bit. Um, plus any of the uh, sinew that's on the outside, if there's going to be any freezer burn, if it's gonna be in there for an extended period of time, uh, that's what will get freezer burned instead of the meat itself. Chef Joe, when he pulls it out of the freezer, he's like, I'd rather just have everything done and not have to do anything. I'm ready to cut it into whatever cuts I want and I'm good to go. So, all right, so we've got top round tender. Uh, this you can cut into steaks and put in the grill. You can cut it into uh, medallions. You can thinly slice it. You can make chops out of it. There's a lot of different things uh, that you can do with it. The uh, head that was on here, uh, you do the same thing with it. You can uh, chunk it up and, and grind it uh, if you want to. Um, but anyway, so tender cut, dry cooking methods. All right, let's go ahead and pull another one out. We'll go ahead and do another tender here we'll clean this up a little bit this is the sirloin butt that sits right on the top of the back of the animal the top of the hip basically which is i guess why it's called the sirloin butt uh, it is also a uh, tender cut and same thing can be used for stir fries for steaks for medallions um, you know any, any of that kind of stuff that's going to get a, a dry uh, cooking method so i'm just going to clean it up a little bit so you can see how i clean some of these rough edges up and I got these little chunks that are coming off. Those little chunks uh, just go in my grind pile, you know? So, um, like, I'd probably just go ahead and clean that up a little bit. And that just goes right where my grind is. Clean this up just a little bit better. Man, the flies are getting crazy out here. Uh, like I said, we're doing a live field to table right now. And all the guys are inside uh, butchering in there. So I couldn't do it in there. A trick, though. If you're in camp and you have access, spray a little Pam on it, flies won't mess with it. Don't know why, but anyway, flies won't mess with it. I don't think they want their, uh, their legs and wings to be all greasy, I guess. All right, so the next one we're going to pull out is the uh, sirloin tip. This is a uh, less than tender cut, so it will get combination cooking methods. You can use moist, you can use dry and moist. So it'd be something like a roast, put in your crock pot, put in your Instapot, um, something along those lines. These make excellent roast. They also are really good for making corn venison. It's one of my favorite cuts that I, that I, I do this with. Uh, so you would inject it, brine it uh, for 24, 48 hours, uh, and then cube it up and boil it in some type of, um, some type of, st of stock. Also makes really good jerky. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up just a little bit, just to make it look a little bit prettier before I put it up. And actually, you know what? I think um, we are using this one. This is Max. I think we're using this one for our camp meat for the recipes that we're doing. Uh, for this particular camp, uh, I remember that we are doing a stuffed poblano pepper uh, with some uh, antelope sausage. And then we are also doing a uh, focaccia pizza with um, uh, antelope sausage uh, as well. So I think we're gonna do a couple of those. So I brought my camp chef with me and I've got the um, pizza oven attachment that goes on it. And so we're gonna use it for the first time to make some wild game pizza. 
So we'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit more because I don't know what Chef Joe has planned uh, with this. But that that you see with a grain in it, that is actual silver skin. And you would just peel it off like you're filleting a fish. Now that does have sinew that runs all the way through, so you're not going to get it all. That's one of the reasons that it is a less than tender cut. But we'll do our best and we'll get a lot of it off of here. And I said that one of the things that makes this easier as well is um, uh, having it cold. So that helps quite a bit. All right, so I'm just gonna put our tough cuts here. We've got our shank. Oh, where'd the heel go? Oh, the heel's right there. All right, so this is the bottom round. We'll clean it up just a little bit, square it up, make it look a little bit better. I'll go ahead and clean the silver skin off of here too. This is another way that you can identify the uh, bottom round or the, the outside round is another name for it, is it has that on a little ledge here, it has uh, silver skin, it has that silver skin strip right here. So that's another way to identify it. And the other one, I'll flip this over here in just a second and show you the difference in the, in the grain. Okay, so you see there, I told you all you make mistakes. I accidentally cut into that one a little bit. So it's not as pretty as, uh, as it should be, but it still looks decent. All right, so with the bottom round, if you look, hopefully you guys can see that grain. You can see how that grain is going diagonal. I don't know if you can see it on that camera or not, but it's going diagonal. Where if you compare it with the top round, see how the top round goes straight up and down this at a diagonal so straight up and down is tender and that is a top round and then diagonal is the bottom round and um, yeah like i said it, it goes uh, diagonal so for the uh, bottom round there's a lot that you can do with it my favorite is to make pastrami so that's where you're going to inject it uh, you're going to brine it for about 48 hours then you're going to coat it with um, some cumin and um, uh, and black pepper and then wrap it in bacon then you wrap that in um, saran wrap and then it's going to sit for another 24 to 48 hours and then it's going to go in the smoker low and slow and it is absolutely delicious so that's one of my favorite things to do with it you can also make a um, a roast with it uh, you can um, slice it thin and uh, you know make some um, uh, steak and cheese sandwiches uh, those type of things actually speaking of that that is one of my favorite things to do do with this cut obviously again antelope it's gonna be much smaller than on some of the other animals but this is a eye of round that does get mistaken for a uh, a tenderloin because they look very similar uh, but this one uh, deborah and i use a lot to make stir fries we'll slice it thin uh, uh, cook it on a high temperature really quick on each side and then we'll make a stir fry with it so that's one of the favorite things to do on a larger animal uh, we would use it as a roast uh, eye around roast is really good and then um, another thing that we do we do a lot of um, philly sandwiches uh, with this cut as well because you can just cut it thin uh, roast it or sear it like i said on high temperature uh, and you're and you're good to go so that is really it that's how quick a um, a hindquarter uh, can go for you so here we've got our let's just start over here on this side so we've got our tough cuts here and then we've got less than tender with a sirloin tip less than tender with the bottom round less than tender with the eye of round we've got tender with the sirloin butt uh, we've got tender with the head and the main part of the uh, top round and then we've got just a little bit of grind there and that's it so it's it's really that simple y'all um i have not been doing this for a very long uh period of time but it is um actually now one of my new favorite things to do so uh anyway 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We will be doing some more with some cooking of these different cuts. Deborah and I will get in the kitchen. We'll make up some recipes uh, that uh, Chef Joe, Chef Albert, and Chef Cliff have provided to us. We'll cook some stuff up, show you how easy that is too. And uh, other than that, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.